Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have Rana Vig on the line. He's president and CEO over at Blue Lagoon Resources. Rana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right, Rana. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to get into, of course, what you're doing over at Blue Lagoon Resources. And I also want to talk about your Dome Mountain project. But before we get into these things, um, I'd like to start off with your background, just for some context. So how did you get started really uh, in business and on this path? Uh, sure. Well, you know, uh, most of my life, uh, Adam, I've been in uh, private uh, enterprise, uh, over 30 years of uh, private family businesses. Uh, basically, you know, I'm a, I'm a startup guy. I, uh, my uh, method of operation is just to be the dumbest guy in the room. I like to, uh, whatever industry I, I get into, I want to surround myself with, uh, you know, very, very uh, bright people. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's uh, served me well over the years. So I've had uh, five different startups in family businesses, all in different verticals. Uh, over 30 years. And then about 10 years ago, uh, a very successful venture capitalist, uh, a friend of mine, you know, worth well over $300 million, uh, made most of his money in, in mining uh, and you know, came to me and said, you know, why don't you get out of your uh, private world and come into the exciting world of the capital markets with me? And, you know, 2008, 2009 kind of had just happened, that financial crisis. And I was looking for a change. So I said, yeah, hey, show me the ropes and uh, let's go. So I got involved in the capital markets uh, in uh, 20, late 2010 and 11, put over a, over a million dollars into the markets and into mining. And uh, believe it or not, uh, about uh, six months later, it was worth about $10,000. I was like, holy oh. smokes, what did I get myself into? That, that wasn't exactly the plan, right? But, uh, <laughs> but the mining sector collapsed. But uh, no one's fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just, uh, these things happen. So, hey, that's the exciting uh, Fast lane of uh, entrepreneurship, right? Uh, you've got to—it's not for the the faint at heart. But you know, I, I hung in there and uh, took over uh, a couple of companies, mining exploration co- companies, and uh, learned the ropes, uh, so to speak. Uh, made a lot of contacts and learned how the capital markets worked, and uh, eventually uh, cleaned up those you know those companies and, and, and moved on. But in 2017, uh, the cannabis uh, sector became extremely hot, so I laser beam focused on that and. Uh, one of the beauties about this business, uh, you know, it, it, you know, if you if you st- if you stick to it and you do the right things, uh, you know, you will make everything that you lost uh, and more. So I was able to take uh, the uh, the largest uh, cannabis uh, uh, company to go public in Canada in history, a company called Curaleaf. It was a 520 million dollar raise, a, a six billion dollar RTO. Uh, so that was a you know very very uh, very very proud to to be able to be associated with that. And then a couple of months later, I had another opportunity. I found a company out of Arizona called Harvest Health and Recreation that became the third largest of 2018, a $300 million raise and a $2 billion RTO. So, yeah, it was a, it was a very, very exciting time. So that's kind of my, my short little uh, one minute on kind of, uh, you know, where I've been and uh, how I got here. And, and, and here I am now and focusing on the mining sector because everything that I was reading was telling me that uh, mining is going to be the, the the next big play, particularly gold, and uh, so I'm, I'm laser beam focused on that, and uh, hope to make this one my next big win. Man, that's awesome, and uh, thank you for sharing that. And I think that's a great transition. So let's just uh, let's just dive right into Blue Lagoon Resources. I mean, tell us a little bit more about the company, please. 
Yeah, so I started uh, this company a, a, a little over a year ago, uh, much to the surprise of, of my uh, associates who were still focused on, you know, like, uh, cannabis and some other industries. But everything I was reading told me the, the macro picture, you know, the macroeconomics that uh, uh, gold had to take off because of everything that was happening around the world with, you know, unprecedented printing of money uh, and the devaluations of currencies around the world. So I decided to to, uh, to start Blue Lagoon Resources, and we started trading in July of uh, 2019, and uh, and really really focused on, on acquiring uh, projects and starting to build a company. And, and in a very short time, in uh, 10 months, I made uh, three acquisitions and started to build a portfolio of projects. And uh, and uh, I'm very very bullish and very excited about it because I think that uh, we're just in the first inning of where the precious metals are 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 uh, you know are headed. Man, that's exciting. And uh, I think that's also, um, let, speaking of where they're headed or where you see, I mean, gold trading at all-time high. I mean, is there, I'm going to ask you that that uh, proverbial loaded question. Do we have room to go higher? I mean, where are we going with this thing? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that we're just uh, beginning. And look, uh, it, it's not uh, just me, right? I mean, a lot more smarter people than me are, are talking about this in organizations that have uh, uh, access to, you know, un on uh, limited uh, research and, and data. So, you know, organizations like Bank of America just recently came out and projected that uh, they expect gold to be $3,000 next year. So I think we're just uh, we're just beginning. And, you know, look, this is not rocket science, right? I mean, uh, the governments around the world, not just here, you know, in Canada and the United States, but all over the world, I mean, they're in trouble, right? Uh, uh, debt levels are at all-time highs. You've got, you know, so they've got to do something, right? They've got to, and, and, you know, they, there's only one thing they know how to do. Ever since 2008, 2009, this quantitative easing has become the norm, right? QE forever. It's here to stay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, it's like we're addicted, right? You know, you know, an addict needs what? Uh, you know, uh, uh, constantly needs more and more to stay at the same level. And that's what's happening here, right? Uh, governments are addicted. People are addicted to this free money. So as they print more and more, uh, this is the environment that gold loves. And so gold is just beginning. And I fully believe that $3,000 next year is uh, absolutely doable. And uh, I expect in the next two to three years, uh, you know, we'll see a $5,000 level. Man, that's it. That's uh, that's exciting stuff, and uh, and uh, and kook and kudos to you for uh, for positioning you well uh, to uh, and and your investors to uh, take advantage of this of this rise. And uh, speaking of that, I want to go into one of your projects. So Dome Mountain, uh, tell us a little bit more about the, about the project and uh, and what you and what and what what it entails. Yeah, Dome Mountain is a very uh, exciting project. We acquired it uh, about uh, six months ago, and we've just uh, laser beam focused on it. It's very exciting because it has a. It's in British Columbia, Northern British Columbia, so it's a very safe uh, jurisdiction. Very important in mining. Uh, it's a all year accessible uh, project, so uh, you know we don't have to only work there for two or three months. We can work on there all year round, which is also very important in mining. And it's a, it's a very close to a, a town, about a 45, 50 minute drive. Uh, miners can go there and you know work all all day, come home and have dinner with their families. I mean that becomes a very important uh, factor for cost uh, as well as uh, retaining the the right talent. But the most uh, the two or three key things with the project is that it's already permitted. You know, Adam, in most of these properties it takes 20 years from the time you start uh, to acquire a property to the time by the time you drill it, and you find something, and you take a production. Well, you know, I got very very lucky here, right? Because the the people who the, who had owned this before had already spent $28 million over the last dozen years on getting this stuff permitted and, and building all the mine uh, infrastructure around it. $40 million before that had been spent, uh, before they got there. So lots of money has been spent on it. Unfortunately for them, uh, age caught up to them. They're uh, wonderful people. They're 83 years old now and not in the best of health. So they literally got this thing to the one-yard line with, with all the permits that they required to commence production, but they just couldn't get it across because there were three or four key things that still needed to finish. Uh, and along along we came and acquired it, and, and we're just working on those things. And uh, not onerous, but only it only requires about a million and a half dollars Canadian, you know, about 1.2 U.S. Uh, to get that uh, to get those things done. And we've already uh, we're already uh, working on that. We're fully cashed up. We have seven and a half million dollars in treasury, so you know we have the capital required to you know to execute on the plan. So that's the one part that's very exciting that we'll, we have a we have a permit to get this thing into production, uh, and then you know there's a, a it's a vast property about twelve thousand hectares, and ninety percent of that property has Did never been. Did you say explored. whoa 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 hold on, say that again that's that's huge. 
yeah, it's, it is a, it's almost 12,000 hectares. It's a huge wow. property. Yeah. And, and, and only, only 10% of it has ever been explored because this was a private company and their focus was just to try to get this thing into production. Unfortunately for them, you know, timing wasn't good. You know, in business, yeah. I'm sure you know, right. timing, it's all about timing, right? Uh, they were unfortunately at the wrong place at the wrong time because gold was around twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300, you know, a few years ago and nobody was that excited about it. Now, here we are, you know, gold, uh, uh, 1900 plus headed uh, to over 2000 and, and, and the market is hot and, uh, you know, things are exciting and investment is, is pouring into the sector. What do you see? Um, like, so how long until, um, you know, you, you expect production, everything to be fully running over ever at Dome Mountain to, start to get this producing? So we, you know, we're, we have a, a, between a four to six month program to get the amendments done. And then after that, it's, it's just a matter of working with the regulators and showing them that we've, we've done everything that they've, uh, that they've asked us to do. So it's, uh, you know, these things are always a little bit tricky to, to predict, but mm-hmm. if every, if everything goes, uh, according to plan and, and with a little bit of cushion room, I fully expect to be in a, in a position to make a production decision by next summer. Wow, so you weren't joking. You are at the la- you are at the one yard line. You're like you're seeing it, you're tasting it. You're like, let's get this ball in the end zone, huh? Oh, it's 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 amazing. It's just uh, you know when, when we went up there with uh, with our technical team, I, we just couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe all the infrastructure that's already in place. Uh, and uh, so often when you when you acquire these mines, you know they're like a hundred years old. So you know mm-hmm. the, all the infrastructure has to be updated. And but here here, I mean, all this all most of this. Uh, Infrastructure was built in the last uh, 10 years, so you know, you know the generators, the, the mechanic shops, uh, you know, everything is, is current. So uh, yeah, we're literally wow. at the one yard line and, and ready to get this thing uh, uh, into production. And timing couldn't be better because you know, as we uh, head into uh, you know the, uh, the, the last part of this year and early next year, uh, gold is, is fully expected to rise. And look, look at what's happening in our lifetimes. I don't think anyone can. Can remember a time when you had this kind of unprecedented uh, printing of money, when you had riots and, and, and demonstrations going on all over the world, and on top of it, you know, you got this world pandemic. I mean, this is the environment that that gold, this kind of destabilization, is what really you know gold thrives on. So we're sitting in the, in, in the middle of a, a perfect storm here, the perfect trifactor, right? If you like, right? Uh, it's an unprecedented uh, time, uh, a time when generational wealth is created if the, if if people you know get in at the right time man that's a, that's a great that's a great term too and that is true cuz you know not always uh there's, there's not always uh, an opportunity to create generational wealth not on investing and not on being at the right you know in the right time and the right cycle it just it's, it's not always it's not always possible so i think that's a great point um so rana that being said uh, i can talk to you about this all day long and i have many more questions about dome mountain and i know you have plenty of other projects going and other things that are um all falling under your company um but that being said we're about out of time on this one so so, Rana, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Blue Lagoon Resources, about the Dome Mountain Project, or about any of the other projects that you have going, um, I mean, what's the best way for for them to do that? Uh, the best uh, would be to go on our website, uh, bluelagoonresources.com. Uh, you know, there's uh, lots of information there. And also, if they uh, if they want more, they're, they're welcome to click on the email uh, a link there. Uh, eventually, it'll make its way to me, and I'm happy to. You know, I'm a very engaged uh, CEO. I love talking to shareholders, big or small, and happy to answer any of their questions. Uh, and uh, and then we can take it from there. In the in uh, in uh, Canada, we we trade uh, under the symbol uh, BLLG, and in the U.S., uh, our ticker is BLAGF. Fantastic. Well, Rana, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, share more about your background. Really interesting. I mean, love to see a serial entrepreneur out there. had some big wins and now in mining and, and now and then got your project, Dome Mountain, at the one yard line. I mean, this is, this is an awesome story. I look forward to following it and uh, and seeing the next thing. We're going to have to have you back on the show again. I'm, I'm excited to talk more about this. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the FY iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Rana, thanks again for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you.